but man, the rose. I expect your parents often tell you it is very wicked to be mean to others. They are right, of course. Babette, Babette. Oh. Merci. Yeah, yeah. This rose you see, my friends, is an enchanted rose, given to by the get ahead of myself. Many of you in the audience might have the same rose, and we thank you for joining us at our magic tonight. We will show you how the denying of the single rose, in and of itself, nothing but the soft fist of petals and the consequences that will follow. I expect... <coughs> yes, but what is it? It is the sheet music. Well, my dance. You said I could have a dance tonight. Yes, uh, later, later. Uh, uh, where was I, Babette? Babette, where was I? Babette! I expect... Ah, yes, yes. I expect you've heard fairy tales before, but... What is it now? My mama told me to remind you what to talk about. I am talking about it. No, you're not, silly. <laughs> what you're supposed to tell them is, Hello, ladies and gentlemen. It is the deepest pride and greatest pleasure that we welcome you here tonight. We ask you to sit back, relax, turn off your cell phones, and unwrap any candy now so you do not disrupt the performance, and know that your exits They are idiots. They know what the exits are. What do you think they've been doing while they've been waiting for us? Talking and texting. <laughs> it is also against the law to take photos or videos of their performance. If you do, the FBI and Disney police will swoop down and take you away. I don't think that will happen. But it's against the law. And Mama always told me not to break the law. That is true, Chip. There will be a 15-minute intermission where you can be our guest and purchase flowers, a drama ground for a member of the production, or your own magical rose. We would like to thank Piggly Wiggly for, 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 for providing us with these materials for the intermission. We will need your help to tell our story. Anyone with a light of rose needs to help us save the beast. When the enchantress appears with her rose, at the end of Act 2, light yours up to save the beast and help him and Belle look happily ever after. Remember, the enchantress will cue you, so let's practice. When I lit up my rose, you lit up yours. Beautiful. Now let's turn them off, and remember to not turn them back on until the appropriate time during the show. If you do, the magic will fade and you'll never be saved. And now, we invite you to sit back and relax as Homestead High School for All the presents Beauty and the Beast. Lived in a shining castle, and although he 
he had everything his heart desired. The prince was spoiled, selfish, and unkind. But then, one winter's night, an old beggar woman came to the castle and offered him a single rose in return for shelter from the bitter cold. Repulsed by her haggard appearance, the prince seemed at the gift and turned the old woman away. But she warned him not to be deceived by appearances, for beauty is found within. When he turned her away again, the old woman's ugliness melted away to reveal a beautiful enchantress. The prince tried to apologize, but it was too late, for she had seen that there was no love in his heart. And as punishment, she transformed him into a hideous beast. There's a powerful spell on the castle and all who live there. Ashamed of his monstrous form, the beast concealed himself inside his castle with the magic mirror as his only window to the outside world. The rose she had offered was truly an enchanted rose which would bloom for many years. If he could learn to love another and earn their love in return by the time the last petal fell, then the spell would be broken. If not, he would be doomed to remain a beast for all time. As the years passed, he fell into despair and began to lose all hope. For who could ever learn to love a beast?
Frenchies Right up on The red dead from the rest of us She's nothing like the rest of us She's different from the rest of us She's better Like in the castle Mama, 
So, did you have a good time in town today? I got a new book. You do love those books. Well, they take me away to wonderful places where there's adventure and mystery and romance and happy endings. Mama, if I ask you something, will you answer me honestly? Don't I always? Do you think I'm odd? My daughter, ah, now where would you get an idea like that? I don't know. It's just that people talk. They talk about me too.
done it. I told you not to let her in. You cannot leave her for the wolves. Is anyone home? Perhaps if we keep quiet, she'll go away. Is anyone here? Not a word, Lumia. Not one word. I, I don't mean to intrude, but I've lost my way in the woods, and I'd like a place to stay for the night. Oh, poor fellow. Oh, it comes with heavy heart. Madame, you're welcome here. I heard that! And I'll thank you to step out where I can see you! Hello! Oh, and goodbye! Wait, wait, wait! You're a clock and you're talking! Yes, astonishing, isn't it? And quite inexplicable. Goodbye! Oh, go to it. I'm surprised at you. We have got to get her out of here before the master finds out! No, oh, please! Uh, this is incredible! How is this accomplished? Oh, please! Don't put your hands in there! Isn't it 
though I'm just full of surprises. For you, mademoiselle. Oh, a miniature portrait of yourself. <laughs> you shouldn't have. Don't mention it. You know, Val, there isn't a girl in town who would love to be in your shoes. Today is the day your dreams come true. What could you possibly know about my dreams, Gaston? Plenty. <laughs>
Tom, maybe you will. You just missed him. Wait a minute. Where did you get that scarf? This found the woods. Pretty nice, huh? This scarf belongs to my mother. Yeah, well, why don't you keep us? <laughs> I want you to think hard and tell me exactly where you found that. No! Think! Somewhere in the woods? Harder! We are the crossings of hate. Ow! That means she's still out there. Look, look, you have to take me back. Back the woods again. Don't you see? Something must be wrong. You have to take me back. Not on your life. <laughs> Fine. <laughs> then I'll go by myself.
nice warm cup of tea to make the world seem a bit brighter. You are a new dear, very pleased to make your acquaintance. <laughs> Careful, darling. Who, who are you? Madame de la Grande Bouche. Perhaps you've heard of me. Sorry. You see, they've forgotten all about me. One can be, and I quote, the toast of Europe, the brightest star, and to grace the stage, but fall under one little spell. That's enough now. Wait a second. This is impossible. Oh, I know it is, but here we are. Well, now, what shall we dress you in for dinner? This is nice. But how would you like to borrow one of my gowns? Let's see what I've got in my drawers. <laughs> oh. Oh. <laughs> <coughs> Ah, oh, here we are. I wore this the night I performed at the Royal Opera. The king himself was there. Of course, I wouldn't have a prayer of fitting into it now. Take it. That's very kind of you, but I'm afraid I'm not going to dinner. Oh, don't be silly. Of course you are. You heard what the master said. He may be your master, but he's not mine. I'm sorry. This is just all happening so fast. That was a very brave thing you did, my dear. We all think so. I'm going to miss my mom so much. Cheer up, child. I know things may seem bleak now, but you must despair. We're here to see you. I don't know you well. If anyone can make the most of living here, then tell it's you. And who knows? You may find home here too.
last inch of me is covered with hair. I promised myself 
There may not be the best way to win the girl's affections. <laughs> I'm 
not about to let the poor child go hungry. Fine. Glass of water, crust of bread, and then oh, I... Of course, wait. I'm surprised at you. She's not a prisoner, no. She's our guest. We must make her feel welcome here. Very well, dinner. But you all keep it down. If the master finds out, it will be our next. Of course, of course. Then what is dinner without a little music? Uh, uh, music? Uh -huh. <laughs> It is with deepest pride and the greatest pleasure that we welcome you here tonight. And now, we invite you to relax, then just pull up a chair as the dining room proudly presents your dinner. Be our guest, be our guest, put our service to the desk. Tie your napkin around your neck, Shelley, and we'll provide the rest. Shoot you sure, hot or thirst, why we only live to serve. Try the gray stuff. It's delicious! Don't believe me, as the dishes they can see. Just 
that's a lazy. You walked in with a whoops daisy. <laughs> a bit. Oh, 
only he wanted here. Come on. Act like a gentleman. I am nothing but a fool. And thanks to some quick thinking on my part, the disaster was completely averted. And that was the last time a stone of that weight was quarried from this area. What's up there? Nothing. No, nothing at all of interest in the West Wing. Ah, so that's the West Wing. They squeak. I wonder what he's hiding up there. Hiding? What an idea, hiding. Well, then it wouldn't be fitting, would it? Perhaps the Mademoiselle would like to see the tapestries dating all the way back to Melodius the Pretentious. <laughs> Maybe later. Perhaps you'd like to see the gardens or the library. You have a library? With books. Oh, yes. Swamps <laughs> books, cloud person books, mountains, and piles of books. <laughs> books with pictures, books with words. Oh, more words you could ever imagine reading in an entire lifetime. Books on every subject by every author who is a pen to pick up.
in the West Wing. And you should learn to control your temper! <laughs> Oh, 
only a little and long ago. Wow. It just so happens that this is the perfect book to read about.
Doesn't want me 
my love. It's past your bedtime. Thank you for inviting me to dinner. Dinner was wonderful. Well, I... Yes? Well, are you happy? Oh, yes. Everyone's so kind. Mrs. Potts of the Air. Yes. Oh. I must speak from the heart.
My mother's not crazy. She was fighting like lunatic. We all heard her, didn't we? Yeah. All right. Come along quietly now. You can't do this. Tell us again, old woman, just how big was that beast? He was enormous. He was at least eight, no more like ten feet tall. You don't get us crazy than that. It's true, I tell you. What are you doing? Let go of me. Tell me, Maurice. When did you start having these delusions? It's not a delusion. The beast is real, and so is the talking clock. <laughs> oh, poor, poor Mel. It's a shame about your mother. Yes, John. You know my mother's not crazy. I may be able to clear up this misunderstanding if. If what? If you'll marry me. What? One little word, Mel. That's all it takes. Never. Fine. Have it your way. Take the old hand. Let go of me, Phil! Leave it! I can prove my mother's not crazy! Show me the beast!